Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim May 21st 2020 Dars highlights major themes were diseases of the heart and diseases of the body The Sheikh was asked a question about the verse from Surah Al-Hadid Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim ma asaba min musibatin fil ardi wa la fi anfusikum illa fi kitabin min qabl an nabra'aha no misfortune befalls the earth nor yourselves save that it is in a book before we bring it down. Truly that is easy for God. The Sheikh comments The misfortunes mentioned in this verse refer to illnesses and illnesses are of two sorts. You have an illness of the body and an illness of the soul. The illnesses of the body are easier to cure. Moreover, if you exercise patience in the face of the misfortune of an illness, then you gain proximity to your Lord. Diseases of the lower self or diseases of the soul are harder. You may not know that you have an illness and you're unable to acknowledge it since you can't recognize it you can't treat it and when you're accused of being ill you claim to be in full health moreover there's a hierarchy within those illnesses of the body and of the soul in bodies you have chronic illnesses and temporary illnesses and in the soul you have the same phenomenon you have a hierarchy and a difference between the various types of illnesses that befall the soul. These illnesses differ according to the seven earths and the seven heavens, which are in the macrocosm for the earth, and in the microcosm they are the seven souls. The soul that commands onto evil is the lowest one, and nafsul ammara then the lawama, the lamenting soul, then the mulhama, the inspired soul, the mutma'inna, the soul at peace, the pleasing and the pleased soul, and then al-kamil al-mukmala, the perfected and perfect soul. These seven souls have illnesses. There are illnesses within the soul as it returns on its journey back to its Lord. Your earth, it's afflicted by illnesses at the level of the skin, or in the blood, autoimmune diseases, and so on, because the shaitan flows through the blood veins of the earth of the human being. And he flows through the veins or the passageways of the soul, and this creates the difficulty. The verse reads, No misfortune befalls the earth nor yourselves, save that it is in a book before we bring it forth. Illa fi kitab. The question is, which book? Is it the book of your earth or the book of your sky, of your heaven? This book embraces both the earth and the heavens because it's an archetypal or an imaginal form of what's contained within the earth and the heaven. And the return of the soul to its Lord is inscribed in this book as well. The illnesses of the body, the illnesses of the grave, in the garden, these are all inscribed in this book. This is the book that you carry with you and you don't acknowledge. This book is the mathal, the archetypal example of the nur in the niche. The mishkat is a book. The nur, the light, is a book. And this book contains what is in the heavens and the earth. And it brings together all things. All things in as sama wal ard are contained therein. It's the mishkat, it's a niche. In Surah Al-Anbiya, God describes the day we shall roll up the sky like the rolling up of a book, kitab, the rolling of scrolls for writings for the book. sama'a as we began the first creation, 
so shall we bring it back. So this book brings together all things. It's the all-embracing niche. This book contains the seven rings of the seven heavens. And you can think of it as the seven upper parts of the elevated book, Al-Kitab Al-Ulwi. These seven heavens are like seven sections of a book. Now, the misfortune, the musiba that befalls the earth, that's your earth. That's the scope or the realm where you flow, the realm in which you navigate. It has an upper part and a lower one. It's two rings. It's a book. It has a sky and an earth, and that sky or the heaven is folded like the scrolls of writing. And this book of yours goes through seven phases, the seven stages of the soul on its return to its Lord, from the animal soul that commands onto evil all the way to the perfected soul. So you should ask yourself, what layer of the earth are you under? And what is your earth? Whatever your earth is, that determines your heaven. Heaven and earth are relational. And so, depending on what your earth is, then that's your heaven. Your heaven will be above it. If you are buried five earths below, then the fifth earth is your earth, and the fourth earth is your heaven. You may ask, what is my earth? Your earth in your body stretches between your stomach or your belly button and your private. That distance is the span of your earth. What is your heaven? Your heaven stretches from your heart through your tongue to your intellect, your forehead, which you place on the ground in sujud. The distance between your heart and your intellect is your heaven. The distance between your belly button and your private is your earth. When a misfortune befalls your earth, that's an earthly misfortune. Musiba ardiya. When that occurs, you must work on it and ensure that you rectify it. Otherwise, you incline to that musiba ardiya, that misfortune of an earthly nature. And then you incline to and are consumed by the desire to eat, drink, and copulate. So earthly misfortunes either are fought, resisted, or one gives up to them, in which case you develop desires and appetites at the level of food, drink, and copulation. The disease that befalls the soul, on the other hand, those are generated by these misfortunes of your earth. And if you incline to your earth, then your earth becomes your imam. It's what leads your direction. And you become a materialist, and your intellect and heart, it assumes the quality of the here below, of the lowest of the low, of the dunya. If, on the other hand, you overcome your disease of the soul, and you treat the affliction that befalls your earth, and you move from your earthly book, your kitab ardi, to your elevated book, then you're someone who works on their soul, purifies their heart, purifies their intellect, and their outer limbs as well. The process of repelling vice and acquiring virtue begins. This is why the book of your earth is smaller than the book of your heaven. The book of your earth, which stretches from your stomach to your private, is about one-third the length of the book that stretches, or the book of your heaven that stretches from your heart in the center of your chest to your forehead, your intellect. And parallel to this, the physical earth at the macrocosmic level, at the sensory level, is smaller than the spiritual earth or the spiritual realm and than the heavens. So you yourself are a book with two sides. You're a book with two covers. You're a wooden tablet with two faces. The continent that stretches from your belly button to your private 
six centimeters. As for the one between your heart and your forehead, it's almost half a meter. The scope of your heaven, it's wider than the scope of your earth. If you incline to your soul, to your lower part, then you give importance to that which is small, and you demean that which is great. You do the reverse of the lantern of the tariqah, which is istahkir nafsaka wa'adhim ghayraka, belittle yourself, which is small, and honor the other, which is great. Instead, you place importance to that which is small, and you, you belittle that which is larger. And you're instructed by your Prophet to have mercy on the small and to honor the elderly or the large, Al-Kabir. Your body as a whole, your book, your notebook will last 60 to 70 years. As the Prophet والسلام, says, of my nation, people live up between 60 and 70 on average. It's limited. Its measure, its lifespan, its duration is contained and constrained. However, the upper book of heaven is closer to the covenant of the Lord. It has a larger and a wider scope. If you work on your heart and your intellect, then the scope of your own orbit begins to broaden and to widen. You have a wider and a broader felek, an orbit that you swim through or within between the heart and the intellect. You have a broader encompassment. The human being has a wider scope. That scope is much broader than the earthly scope or encompassment, which is constrained, tight, and narrow. The heavenly book in relation to the earthly one comes first. For the human being, the heavenly book precedes the earthly one. Because we were in the day of Alastu Birabbikum. Am I not your Lord? In the world of the seed, in the womb of the mother, you underwent different forms and transitions. And through each phase, you underwent or you ate and derived nutrition in a manner that you don't even know of. How were you nourished in the womb? How were you nourished in the world of the seed? What nourished you in the world of Alastum Rabbikum. Those modes of nourishment are broader and we recall none of it versus the earthly book. You know something of how you're nourished. You recall what you experienced. You recall your child play. You recall early events in life. You recall your nourishment and old age and so on. The spirit, the ruh, flows through these different books or these different phases, and remains unseen on account of its exaltedness. It's hallowed beyond the reach of your lower parts. So if you wish to study the upper book, the heavenly book, the path of your spirit, you do so through the remembrance of Allah, through dhikrullah, so that your home is given permission to become elevated through the dhikr. في بيوت أذن الله أن ترفع. You elevate that home, your earthly home, and for that you need permission, even, and you need dhikr, remembrance of Allah. And it's through that that you can know whether you are among the people of salah or talah, righteousness or vice. And when you study yourself, if you discover that you're not among the people of righteousness, be content with what you have and rectify your state. If you recognize that your earthly book is ill, then apply the prophetic instruction and heal your sick through sadaqa. Dawu mardakum bis sadaqa. Give charity to heal your sick earthly book. If you try to pierce through the first heaven of your soul and you're unable to do so, that is because you acted, you did things that displeased your Lord. And you need to turn to God in repentance and to give sadaqah. Give sadaqah to cure yourself, to cure your illness and exert effort because your soul is dead. It's not yet alive. Awaman kana mayitan. فَأَحْيَيْنَاهُ Is he who was dead 
and to whom we give life, making for him a light by which to walk among mankind like unto the one who is in darkness from which he does not emerge. Now, a woman can mayit and the one who is dead, that's the one who does not see God's light. And to whom we give life, when you see Nurullah, you're given life. So long as you do not see Nurullah, you're dead. And if you're in that state, even if you're 60 years old, you have to return Raddul Madhalim, whatever transgressions you committed, you have to fix. That's a form of sadaqa as well. If you stole money from orphans or of people who've passed away, try to at least lighten your load. Take yourself into account. This is the path to Allah. This is what wayfaring is about. It's not always about experiencing visionary disclosures. What theophanies are you going to experience if you've spent decades in awhal, in the puddles, instead of decades in ahwal, in spiritual states? Sell your own soul. Sell your possessions. Sell your mal, your wealth. Because mal is from mayalan from inclination and if you sell your wealth then you incline from that which is lowly to that which is high from the low to the exalted and when you do so for the sake of your Lord then you attain rectitude istiqama uprightness on the straight path then after having rectified yourself having been dead and been given life and been granted the nur then you walk among mankind. You walk with that nur in the realm of separation. Faith, iman, is light. It's nur. And it increases and decreases with righteous deeds. So wash your sins away with charity. Relieve yourself of your heavy load, of your wizr, of your burden with sadaqa. It's your carbon dioxide. It's the darkness in your heart. Rid yourself of it for the sake of tazkiyah, of inner purification, in order to have takhliya, inner emptiness, so that there will be a space within you for Nurullah to enter. Now that you've reached that, the soul is ready to ascend to the first heaven. Now the doors of that heaven open up, and they open up in the form of a crimson or an oil-colored rose. وَرْدَةً كَدِّهَانَ فَإِذَا شَقَّتِ السَّمَاءُ When the sky is rent asunder فَكَانَتْ وَرْدَةً كَدِّهَانَ It resembles a crimson colored rose. Are your sins forgiven yet? No. At the second heaven you are in place and you find that you're veiled. You ascend there as well. But the doors are closed. The doors to the second heaven of your soul are shut. What do you do? You have to descend back to your first earth and wash and rectify yourself and refine yourself and rid yourself of the subtler sins. Whatever veils you, you have to pierce through that and so on. You go back and forth, up and down, through the heavens until you reach your seventh and there you perform two rak'ahs under the low tree of the furthest boundary, Sidratul Muntaha. There you perform, perform the true prayer with complete presence with your Lord, the prayer of connection of sila with Allah Ta'ala. And there you hear, Assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin. وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد إنك حميد مجيد